Hey everybody, let's go to the scary house! <laughs> oh, they, I just love that they couldn't come up with a better name. You know, not Pokemon Mansion, Pokemon Manor, or the Chateau. No, just scary house. Did they already use Chateau in an earlier game? I think they might have. Yeah, Chateau was in Gen 4. Damn, because that would have been perfect for, for this, because France. Yeah. Well, maybe they need to make a Pokemon game in fictional Canada. That's Gen 9. It's going to be very boring. <laughs> Woo! A whole generation about about trainers complaining about Big Dairy. <laughs> See, the problem is, it's not that Canadian problems aren't interesting. Yay! It's not that Canadian problems aren't interesting. It's that they sound extraordinarily boring to outsiders. Uh... Oh. I got a super potion. You did it. I'm proud Ooh. of you. I just really want to find things. So, I'm getting creepy music. And there's an abandoned playground with rain near the scary house. Yep. If I came back here at night, would there be a ghost? Mm. This music is so ill-fitting, I love it. <laughs> I'm like going through like the haunted Paper Mario woods here, which that yeah. zone is awesome and sucks, by the way, in Paper Mario. Um... You oh, can Franklin. find you can find one ghost Pokemon here, uh, but it's a five percent chance in the swamp. Oh no, I'm sorry, uh, five percent in both the grass and the swamp, and it's Haunter. Ooh, I do it like Haunter. So Gumi, he's uh, the weakest Dragon type ever, I believe, and um, his whole thing is that he can evolve twice, but his second evolution will only happen during the rain. Oh. He is also the pseudo legendary of the generation. So I could just bring him back here. Yeah, uh, it it's not always raining, but uh, if you like enter a building and come out of it, then it should like reset whether or not it's raining or not. Oh, okay, so I could make it rain really easily. Yeah. So you also have a couple of uh, great marsh Pokemon available to you, like uh, Scorpy, cool. Carnivine, and Quagsire. Uh, Carnivine, I always thought looked really cool. Mm -hmm. Quagsire is definitively very cool. There's no debate mm -hmm. about that. If anyone says otherwise, they're they're wrong. Uh, Quagsire was definitely on my first ever Gen 2 team, because he's awesome. Mm, he's cool. Good type combo, too. Really weak to grass, but I like it. Reminder, you do also have Quick Balls, in case you ever want to catch anything on the first go. I always forget about that. Uh, net Ball? <laughs> I'm one of the few Pokemon on this route who is not Water or Bug. Fuck. <laughs> okay, I'll paralyze it. You can't, I don't think, because it's uh, an electric type. Damn it, even though it's a grass move? Yeah. Timer ball? Uh, don't know if enough turns have passed. Oh. Ah! I mean, I'm never going to use it anyway, am I? You want to just go back to town and stock up on Ultra Balls? I do. I mean, we have a lot of Quick Balls. Those are better. Yeah. I should be looking for items here. There must be some, right? There is one right over there, but... Well, yeah. You need to go down from, uh, from where you're currently standing. And you'll get stuck right there, I believe. How did someone go over here just to drop something in the first place? Maybe it got swept up with the rain? I don't know. Ah, there you go. That's a good explanation. What do I get? Is it worth it? Uh, you get money, I guess. How much is a big mushroom even worth, though? 2,500? It's like half of a nugget. Uh, kind of worth it. I just really want to trudge through this marsh, you know? You want to catch one of these? Kinda. 
Just toss a quick ball, it should catch. Yeah. So when you say weakest dragon, is that counting when it's fully evolved? Uh, no, Gumi himself is the weakest dragon. Okay. But his fully evolved uh, form is a pseudo-legendary. Is it a particularly good pseudo-legendary? I think so. It's got a lot of special defense, and uh, it it can learn a lot of moves. Its uh, hidden ability is Gooey, which is unique only to it, I believe, where if you hit it with a physical move, it slows the uh, target down. Hidden moves are really hard to get, aren't they? Yeah, hidden abilities, I believe, in this game are only accessible in uh, the Friend Safari, which is post-game. Uh... Uh, its stats spread is 100 attack, 110 special attack, but 150 special defense. Oh no, Gumi! Ah! I, we're going north right now, aren't we? We are, yeah. I kind of like that the north has swamps. I like that. Yeah. Because if we are going northeast, then if my knowledge of the French countryside is correct, Going northeast would be going towards the marshlands that uh, you would see across a lot of, like, Belgium and, and Netherlands. Wow! One health! And this is why Street Sharks is the coolest Pokemon ever. What level does Street Sharks evolve again? Next level, I believe. Ooh. Oh, we're so close. I'll use some potions. Ooh, the uh, audio was bugging out for a second there. Yeah, it was taking its time to load. There we go. I like that the items menu is pretty snappy. Mm hmm. I think a lot of the technical aspects they did in this game are really well done. I'm pretty oh, impressed yeah. with this so far. Like for their first outing on 3DS, they did a really good job. Yeah, loading was very fast, for example. Yeah, and saving is crazy fast. Mm hmm. Was it you said before it's like that on the actual 3DS, right? It, just it is, yeah, super, yeah, super fast. That's fantastic. I'm happy they're able to do that. It really does feel like the 3DS was a massive upgrade over the DS, and I thought the DS was a really good console. Mm hmm. And uh, the 3DS, I believe, is Nintendo's best selling console ever. Is it? Wow, I think so. I think you might be right. I've heard something about that. I know their handheld stuff in general has always done really well. Okay, well, that right there should be the level up that evolves me. I will um, still have Intimidate after the evolution, right? Yes, you will. Foul Play. Is Foul Play worth Foul it? Foul Play will do more damage based on physical attack. Um, yeah. I, I don't know, personally, because Crunch is reliable. Uh, crunch is reliable, and Foul Play says it's 95 power, but it also weakens if it's not a good attack stat. Yeah, I don't know if I want that. Uh, you could all get rid of Torment, because it's not like you're going to use it much. Yeah, let's let's have Foul Play just for the occasional super high attack thing that we can counter. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing, though, is that it's Dark type. Are there many dark type or many people weak to dark type that also have crazy high attack? Because I usually hmm. think of psychic types who rarely have a good attack stat. Oh, you know what? Aegislash uh, is ghost steel, so it'll be weak to foul play. Right? Yeah. Dark is good against ghost and psychic, and that's it, right? Ghost, psychic. Yep, yeah, that's that's correct. Because if I remember right, ghost and dark are good against the same things, at least until fairy, maybe. Ghost does not like fairy doesn't resist ghost, but it does resist dark. Yeah, I, I know some of the types are different. I just mean um, ghost and dark are both super effective against the. Same oh yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. Which is very strange. Okay. Nice. I, I like that. It's like a electric guitar riff kind of thing for street yeah. sharks. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, our attack is pretty awesome now on street sharks. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, do you want to teach it a, uh, a different TM? I wouldn't mind checking what I've got. We do have Rock Tomb, and he can learn that for for coverage. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit yeah, by number, I guess. There we go, sorted. Um, we also have Thunderbolt now because of the gym, and I think Lapras can learn that. Lapras can. We can have some electric coverage. 
That is pretty tempting. What would we get rid of? We still have Parish Song, and we have yet to use that. Parish Song is a great ultimate fuck you, but are we gonna need it? Hmm. If we're playing through casually, then I kind of get the feeling we won't need it, and that we'll get more out of Thunderbolt's type coverage. Mm-hmm. Because, um... Water types, we need electricity and or grass, preferably and, in case of, like, Quagsire. We have an awesome grass user, uh, but we don't have electricity. And we're not great against flying types either. Are we? Well, we have Ice Beam. Yeah, and then there's the off chance a water flying could come into, into play at any point. And we're likely to get more rock moves and better ones as time goes on. Maybe we hold off on Thunderbolt then. Okay. I don't feel like we need need it now, but let's remember that we've got that in the back if we need it. Mm -hmm. Give up on learning, yes. Um, mm, poison Jab is cool, but we've got the high special attack. Grass mm -hmm. Knot is really cool. Maybe at some point we'll get that. Power Ooh, up power punch. up punch on Crocodile. That could be really fun because it, we, it yeah. buffs his attack per per use. And his attack is already really high. We could potentially get a lot out of that. Mm -hmm. What would we replace? Mud slap. Oh yeah, we don't need that anymore. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. Cool. Okay, what other things do we want? Thunderbolt Return is cool. Uh, do we want to put Return on Free you? now instead of mm. Headbutt? I bet you its happiness is high enough considering we gave it a haircut and stuff. Yeah, we might be able to get some use out of that. Let's do that. We'd be out of a flinch move. That's fine. But yeah, in the grand scheme of things, what does it really matter? Plus, Free you can take a hit. Yeah. Headbutt. Well, I was going to say, what about Retaliate? Uh, I guess it's a little bit niche, but... I like Retaliate. The problem is uh, I'm probably not going to remember to use it, am I? Because mm. when my Pokemon goes down, my first thought isn't, let's go switch in for Retaliate. It's going to be, what's the next best type advantage I could get? There's a Pokeball there, by the way. You can uh, loop around this little yeah, I stump should. area. So a reminder about Shelmet and Carablast is that you need to trade them with each other in order for them to evolve. Yeah, I remember that. I should switch. I should get more experience on Tyrant. Tyrant. Because he's close to evolution too, isn't he? Yes. A lot of water types around here, though. I got to be careful about that. Dooby doo boom. Tyrant. Ah, Poliwhirl. Leveled up during the day at 39, so you are one level off. During the day, does this count? I believe so. Okay, well, we might level it up this fight. It's maybe not. If he did the fighting on his own, maybe. God damn it. Wonderful. Okay, well, he's only using Bubble Beam. I always liked Poliwhirl. Mm -hmm. Poliwhirl's real fun. In the manga, he was uh, the first Pokemon used by Red. I think I remember hearing that. Oh, that is a dragon, isn't it? Fracture. Yeah, so you can um, either use Tyrant for experience or Lapras for an easy Ice Beam. I will go for Dragon Claw and see how it happens. We've got high defense. If he uses a uh, dragon move, I'll probably be okay. Is this supposed to look like a plane? See, I don't know. Maybe? Mm, look on Bulbapedia's trivia section. I know the pseudo legendary of uh, Gen 8 is a lot more like a an airplane. Oh, I got so close to leveling there. Fracture. Ooh, Loudred looks weird in this one. Fracture represents December in the Unova horoscope. Uh, Fracture's, Fracture's tusks may draw inspiration from Dysonodonts. Dysa Is that how you pronounce that? 
Don't know. Tusk synapsids with thick hides from the Permian era, most likely Placerius, though its elongated tusks seem more like pickaxe blades. Is it supposed to be like a dinosaur? Yeah. Okay, see, my knowledge of dinosaurs is nearly non-existent. See, it would make sense if it was themed after pickaxe blades because Haxorus, its evolution was, it has tusks that look like an axe. Okay. Is it part ground type? Uh, no, they're all pure dragon. Oh, I thought it'd be either rock or ground if it's like a pickaxe. Mm. Or steel. I wonder if they do learn any steel moves besides via TM. Uh, it does not look like it. That's a pretty cool evolution. I like that. Yeah, right. So that is the final form, right? Yes. Sweet. All right, let's take a look at those stats. <laughs> look at the thing that evolved <laughs> earlier. Strong jaw still, good defense, really good special attack, as terrible as I expected. His attack is almost as high as Street Sharks, which is impressive considering Street Sharks has uh, boosted attack. Mm hmm. All right, I got some cool Pokemon. Uh, yeah. What do I have? Everything I have is fully evolved, right? Correct. Cool. Uh, I'm going to have Fur you up front because I just want to make sure that his friendship is good. Yeah. I want that thing in the corner. I uh, want that thing in the corner. Have you been watching Clone High recently? Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I wish I could do a good impersonation of what was that noise? I wish I could do that, a good that was impersonation. Return, doing the oh. doing thing. Sounded like um It sounds like it should be an item finder noise, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh, that's so weird. Uh I wish I could do a good um a good JFK, JFK. from Clone High. Specifically JFK from Clone High, because that impersonation is fucking hilarious. I like your word, magic man. I love that that's becoming a meme that the rest of the internet is picking up on all of a sudden. Because mm. I've been bringing up on my show how awesome Clone High is for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. My my fandom of Clone High has predated my YouTube channel. You as a Canadian have been preaching about a Canadian show's like uh, pull for years. Mm -hmm. So you know you can trust this man. Yes. Also, damp rock. Of all the damp rocks I could find in this swamp, that's the one that I needed to pick up. That is the damp rock. All right, so you need to come to the, the left side. Oh. Oh, okay, she'll just tell you to go there anyway. It's the scary house. This is the house. It's like a house you make in Minecraft in the middle of a disgusting swamp. Funny you mentioned Minecraft because tomorrow Steve is being added to Smash. Oh, yeah. I bet you he plays in a really fun way. That's what people are saying. That's I kind of get excited whenever they add someone from an all new game that mm -hmm. is like really atypical because that pretty much just guarantees you're going to have a really unique play style and that's always fun. Mm -hmm. This house looks really nice on the inside. Would you say Terry falls into that category or no? Yes, because Terry is really fun how he's always facing his opponent because of the game he's from. That's an awesome gimmick. I guess, to be fair, though, with the argument that him being unique, it kind of loses water because Ryu and Ken already did that and they've been in the game for a little bit. Eh, it's still fun. Yeah, it's still fun. Uh, also, the camera is really going far here. If I just leave uh, it like this. Uh, potted plant. It, oh, oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, no, the haunted pottery. <laughs> the, the poltergeist. I'm sorry, the pottery geist. All right, I guess I should. Where's do the guy? Little... Where'd he go? I I I don't have a button lined up. <laughs> uh, uh, I I don't know what sound effect to press. Uh, I that. There uh, you go. Then you can smash that pot. <gasps> oh no, it's a haunting. <laughs> Whoa! All right, I used to do creepy pasta readings for like three years. Back in the day, let's see if I do. Right, I I'll still do have thing. the job. I sucked at it back then. <laughs> I probably still suck at it. Did I bet you a lot of people nowadays don't even know that I did creepy pasta readings every single week 
of over 100 creepypasta, most of them made by fans on my forum, so they're not anywhere else on the internet, and the vast majority of them are Pokemon. But I don't recommend you go look them up if you're curious, because I was fucking terrible at reading them, and I was also a real hard ass on rating them at the end, so it's not fun, but mm -hmm. people like them. Anyways, it was a dark and stormy night many years ago. Lost, I arrived at this house and went inside. The lights would not turn on, so I fearfully looked around the house. Eventually, I made my way into the kitchen. There was no sign of anyone being there. I found the fridge! <gasps> and when I opened it, a faint light leaked out. I finally... I could finally make out my surroundings. And I saw the faint outline of a man... Heard huddling in the corner of the room. Not hurdling, that's very hurdling different. Hurdling himself into the <laughs> corner of the room. I tried to tell him that I was lost and I was hoping that he'd let me stay until morning. But when I approached him, the man suddenly screamed, Stay back! I apologized and continued to plead my case. Please, can't you help me? This is a very small room we're in, by the way. I'm not talking to you, he shouted. I looked at the man in surprise. When I did this, the man asked me, can't you see them? Behind you. A horde of faceless men! Now then, since I told you a wonderful story that will always hunt you, what happened next? Uh, you just stayed? You, you left? No, it was just a horde of faceless men. That's the whole story. Yeah. There's no conclusion. <sighs> Wow. Yeah, sure. Fine. It's, it's like not even the value of any of the trainers I fought on my way here. You haven't really seen this mechanic uh, at all during the game, but a lot of services in the game will ask for tips. And uh, there's no real sign to say that if you tip something, it will affect anything within the game. It's mm -hmm. just something you could do as a courtesy. I kind of like that. Yeah, but so that's the first time you in this playthrough have run into that, but it has been uh, an option for a while. Does it actually do anything? No, I think it's just, again, oh. for courtesy. I would have liked if it did something in the long run. I think people have assumed that it uh, it affects shiny rates, <sighs> but uh, that uh, that also is one of those schoolyard yeah. uh, rumors, kind of like if you press down A and B whenever a poke Pokeball is yeah. trying to capture something, it increases the chance. I think on my play playground, it was just the B button. Hmm. I just... If he's going to let me explore, then... Nothing? Back here? No? Out of the view of the camera? No? There's like There's no point to this anymore. Oh, I can just watch TV in his house and he doesn't look at me. Huh. I do like that you said before, though, that each one of the, your friends is supposed to be like a different play style of Pokemon player. Well, the comments po pointed it out first. Yeah, I I just really like that one of them was like, sorry, what was the story? I wasn't listening. No, <laughs> I totally get that. I totally get that. Like, I, I know some some people will watch like, a YouTuber playing a um, some kind of game and they'd be like, you're not paying attention to the plot and they get mad about it and they call them stupid over that. And it's like, uh, look, this, some, some game players are just different. Some just don't give a shit about plot. They just really like gameplay. Let them play the game the way that they want to play the game. Uh, if anything, they're probably just playing it that way because that's how their personality traits are, you know? I wouldn't mm. really blame them. They're just different. I only pay attention to the plot if I'm really invested. Uh, and if I am really invested, I'll pay close attention. A great example of that, a game that is like really heavy on plot uh, that I did get really invested in. I'm not going to switch any of this. Um, is what was it? It was Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. The game started with like 15, 20 minutes of, of um, gameplay. After, like, a little bit of talking. There, there was some talking. 
And it was enough for me to be like, okay, this seems really fun, and so I'm invested in the game mechanics, so I know I'll want to spend the time on this. You can and go then, into that between those houses, by the way. You were just not lined up correctly. Oh, okay. Use the D-pad if you need uh, precise sure. movement. Um, I... Oh, that's actually pretty good. So, I... Uh... Right, so I didn't mind that there was like a 20-minute cutscene immediately after that. I was actually quite invested because I need to know that I like the game mechanics first, you know? Then I'll give the story a chance. And if I'm not finding the story engaging, then I'll just stop engaging with the story, you know? And just keep playing it for the for the gameplay. Mostly because I, I mostly play strategy games and a lot of them don't have a plot. The narrative is whatever you make for yourself. You know, like before this, I was playing Hearts of Iron 4, which is a World War II game. There's no plot narrative in that. It's... Every time you start the game, it goes however it goes. Mm -hmm. The Great Pokeball Factory. Wait, is it a Poke Great Ball Factory or is it a <gasps> Great Pokeball Factory? Well, the statues of our regular, they're just regular Pokeballs, so I don't know. Also, mm -hmm. probably not a good sign that Team Flare is uh, in charge of, or at least in front of, the uh, Pokeball Factory. Yeah. Ooh. Is this... A waste of my time, I see? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> you will need Burn to be back meal. here at the Pokeball Factory later, but if you want to go looking for items, there are a few out here. I want them. I'm going to get the items and you can't stop me. So because this is a Pokeball Factory, I'm fairly sure the items that you can find out here, if there are Pokeballs, are just Pokeballs. Oh, oh Max Ether, nice. So it's right below you, I believe, and you're going to need yeah. to go into a different entrance. Fuck. The controls aren't always the smoothest. Yeah. Lame. <laughs> what? They make Pokeballs at this Pokeball factory? Whoa. I just wanted it to be a good Pokeball, not a bad Pokeball. Yeah. I didn't know this was a lame Pokeball factory. I thought it was an awesome Pokeball factory. See, that's the reason why they don't call it the Poke Great Ball factory. They just call it the yeah. Pokeball factory. Max survive. Yeah, that's I, good. Yeah, I won't complain about that. But what you will complain about is this hidden item. No, you're not. Uh, no, that's fine. What I will complain about is the probably an ice heal I'll get at the end. And I think you've got everything now. Have you in your life used an ice heal? Maybe like once. Probably like once for me too. Uh oh, there we go. Yeah, sorry. I, I know getting on the bike during a maze is like hard mode. <laughs> Can I beat Pokemon X using only the bicycle? Uh, you want to check out the vendor, by the way? You're, you're, you don't need to heal. You uh, haven't gotten into a battle since your last one. That is correct. Sorry, it's reflex. You can get some Ultra Balls at the at the store. I probably should. Now that I presumably have decent money, I got decent money. You can always sell the uh, the big mushroom you got. That is true. Got a lot of stuff available. Hey, look, though. Ice Heels. You should buy a lot. Okay, it's just making sure that I did stock up on Escape Ropes and Max Repels. I'll get a couple more just in case. Hmm. Hmm. Do it. Yeah. Thank God. Now we'll never be frozen for more than a turn. Is Awakening also one you absolutely never end up using? I use it a little bit more often than an Ice Heal because at the end of a battle, I'm like, all right, how many Awakenings have I picked up? I'll just toss it on there. I will say I use it more than Ice Heal or Burn Heal. That is true. Mm-hmm. You better have burn heal. There is a Gaim here, right? Yeah, it's uh, going up that path to your left, and it's just it's at that little house up against the tree. Is it safe for me to assume it's either ghost or fairy because this place has giant mushrooms and the music is whimsical? It is safe to assume one of those two things, yes. Okay, until next time, have a nice day. See ya.